Scottish Rite Hospital on another episode of SRH Access, and I'm here with Dr. Steve Richards. Welcome. Thanks very much. We're so excited to have you. This is your first time on Facebook Live. That's yeah, so, good to be here. Yeah, we're here actually in one of our casting clinics. So what happens in here? Why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? Well, this is one of our cast rooms, actually. Uh, we see the babies come in here, and we do the casting in these rooms. We're stocked with our plaster supplies, and all of our sinks are prepped for all the plaster supplies. So we do our work in this particular Fully group. equipped. Fully Ready equipped. to go. Right. So before we get started, we're trying to take live questions. So if you have a question about Clubfoot, put in the comments below, and we'll make sure to ask Dr. Richards today. So today, everything is Clubfoot. Let's get started. Sure. What is club foot, Dr. Richards? Club foot is an abnormality of the foot that the baby is born with. It's often picked up prenatally on the ultrasound. It's done at about 20 weeks. And so actually we'll see a number of children not yet born. I see their moms who come in and we do a little bit of a consultation ahead of time to discuss what we're needing to do. And, um, and we go over the models like we have here and sort of put moms at ease a little bit. They feel a little bit more comfortable having learned a little bit more about it. So a club foot is an abnormality where the foot is turned in like this, pointed down like this, and uh, it doesn't hurt. Uh, the baby's not really aware of it. It's no pain. But our goal is to take this foot and make it into a normal appearing foot. And we do that through a series of cast changes, stretching and cast changes, in an effort to get that foot corrected. That's a club foot. Wow, okay, so then does it happen on both feet? Um, one or the other, mm -hmm. could it be both? You know, what is the chances of that happening? So we, we see it a little bit more frequently in boys. Okay. Occasionally there's a family history of it, so there can be a genetic component that leads to a club foot in the future generations. Most of the time we don't have that positive history in the family. Um, we see it in half of the patients, one foot, okay. and half the patients, both feet. Okay. So um, it presents either way. Most of the time, the kids are normal um, in every other way. So it's picked up on an ultrasound, say at 20 weeks when mm -hmm. mom is pregnant. The ultrasound is then repeated with a little bit higher resolution technique. And the ultrasonographer scans very carefully to see if there are other associated abnormalities. Most of the time they're not. It's a simple uh, problem that involves one or both feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a mom who has this 20-week checkup mm -hmm. and club foot, you know, if it's possible, if they see it on the ultrasound, how are they getting to Scottish Rite? Are they getting referred from their doctor to come here? What maybe can you tell those moms out there that might be going through this right now? Sure. Uh, a lot of the times it's through their pediatrician. Okay. A number of times it's through the internet, mm -hmm. and they may find our site there on the internet and they come here for that, or it's through their pediatrician. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so getting into more of the condition, what is the possibility of damage to maybe some of the baby's the tissues or the blood vessels that are inside of the foot? Well, most of the time there is something that has not developed proper to, properly in the leg and okay. the foot. We don't know what it is necessarily that arrested that development, mm -hmm. but it's seemingly like a normal foot, but something prevented the normal progression of the normal foot development. Okay. So the blood vessels are there, the tendons are there, the nerves are there, they all function, but they're very tight and fixed in a position like this. So our goal is to gradually, gently stretch this over into position that allows for correction and our attempt is to avoid an operation of the foot. Right, definitely. And so once a baby is born mm -hmm. and they have club foot and they come to Scottish Rite, mm -hmm. what is the steps of possible treatment? And it, is it a week after they're born? Is it the next sure. day? Or? Yeah. We'll tell mom that once their baby's born, we'd like to see them within the first couple of weeks of life. Okay. And we'll begin the stretching at that time. The baby's relatively small and thin. And that helps us uh, as we put casts on, and I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. But if we see a baby who's three months old or six months old who's been nursing a lot and is somewhat pudgy, right. then it's a lot harder to keep the casts on. Yeah. They slide off. So we like to see them within the first couple of weeks of, uh, after they've been born. Okay. And then the method that uh, is most commonly used 
in the country and basically worldwide is mm -hmm. called the Ponsetti Method. Okay. So we do that here. We went up and we trained with Ponsetti when he was up in Iowa. Uh, I got to know him as a colleague and as a friend. Um, and we'd have some dialogues together. But the, that's the most common treatment method. Another method that we've also used is the French physical therapy method. But by and large, most families are better versed with the Ponsetti method and prefer to move ahead with that. Okay, so what is the step of the Ponsetti method? What does it look like? Sure. So Ponsetti method is, is a manipulation of the foot. So you have a newborn who has a foot like this, and through a gentle process, we will stretch the foot gradually into a position such as this, and we'll apply a cast. Cast comes above the knee like this. And then a week later, after that's had the stretching, we take the cast off and we manipulate it further. So after the course of several casts, we've taken it from there to here and we take it way out to the side. So after three or four or five casts, we have a foot position similar to this. And it's still down. And so then we put some numbing medicine on the skin. We clip the heel cord and we can bring that foot up so that we can stretch it up and get the foot flat to the ground. Okay. So after somewhere between six and eight weeks total, mm -hmm. the cast is on and they, they are finished with the casting. Oh wow. So once we clip the heel cord, the last cast stays on for three weeks while the heel cord mends back together. So when the foot is corrected, mm -hmm. after this six or eight week period of time, we then move into a uh, a special shoe. Uh, this is what we put the clubfoot baby's feet in. Oh, okay. We keep them turned out in a position similar to what the cast does. And they stay in this and they wear that full time. They wear it in the morning, in the day, at night. So they wear it full time for the first three months. They come out of it for 30 minutes every day three times. Oh, wow. So that the skin can get a little bit of relief from the pressure. Right. And after three months of doing that full time, we go into a nighttime brace, which is the same brace. Okay. And they use that up until the age of two to four years. So as they get bigger, you can see that we size the braces bigger. And each time they come in, we assess the fit. And as they outgrow the brace, they get into a bigger one. So wow. that's the process, really. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty straightforward. It is. So when they're first put into this Ponsetti casting, how often are they coming back to the hospital to get that changed? Mm -hmm. So we see them each week. Okay. So my plaster clinic, for example, is every Wednesday afternoon. So okay. the baby comes in, we put our first set on, and then we see them the following week. And after three or four weeks of that, we're ready to clip the heel cord, stretch the foot up, and put the final set of casts on if it's bilateral or just one side if it's one foot's involved. And that cast is worn for three weeks. Okay. So uh, then they come back here in the clinic and we remove the cast. A simple saw mm -hmm. removes the cast. It's done safely. We make sure the skin is well protected. It's always a concern a parent has when they see a cast saw. They think, wow, what's going to happen? But we do very carefully remove the, the cast and the skin is always very carefully protected. And so that cast comes off. They go downstairs to our brace shop here at the hospital. They get their brace. It's fit down there. We see them back up here in clinic. Make sure the uh, fit is proper. Make sure mom and dad understand the instructions well. And then we um, transfer a fair amount of the responsibility of having gotten the foot corrected mm -hmm. to them to maintain the foot corrected. Right. And they maintain mm -hmm. it by being reliable in the use of the brace. Right, because you're not seeing them every week once no. they're in that brace. Right, we see them each month for the first three months, okay. and then every three months. So then, what about, you know, long term? Are these patients seeing you until they're toddlers, into adolescents? What is kind of the monitoring of sure. the club feet? Well, we, we are studying our results of the club feet, so we follow them a long time to see how well it's all working out. But um, after that two-year period of time, where we've seen them every three months, some families like to use the braces a longer period of time, some do not. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge to get them to wear the brace reliably, even up to two years of age. Right, because they're starting to move around, they're starting to walk. Yeah, and the child doesn't really want to wear it. Right. And so yeah. mom and dad really have to make a diligent effort to do that. Okay. And that's, um, that's not easy. And some 
follow through beautifully in some struggle like that. And if the brace isn't worn, the foot has a potential of coming back. Okay. And then mom and dad may see that and say, let's put it back in the brace. And by that time, it's too late because the foot is a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Baby's a little bit fussier. So we have to sort of repeat the process at uh, some intervals. In older age. Patients, yeah. So this is obviously very common in babies. Is it About possible? Mm -hmm. So is it possible for um, a you know a baby that's a little bit older, maybe two, for it to kind of come about, or is it only when they're an infant? Well, they're born with it. Okay, so, yeah. so only born with it. But but a foot can be corrected and then relapse, mm -hmm. so it can return to a partially club foot position, okay. and that requires more uh, intervention. We try to recast that out and improve it that way, but if it's too tight and it hasn't worked, then we have to do some limited amount of surgery to the foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what's maybe some of the long-term problems that the yeah. foot can bring? Well, first of all, I tell you that the long-term um, sort of opportunity for the baby and for the family is great. So whereas um, two decades ago, a lot of surgery was done for club feet, to get the foot in the right position, and it worked, but it made the foot stiff. Okay. So as the babies would be out there playing at age eight or 10 years of old, uh, they'd come in and the foot would be stiffer and be less comfortable. They'd complain of pain. Right. So if we can avoid big surgery to the foot, then we do. So we get the foot corrected, and a number of the kids are gonna do great and basically function normally. So the foot looks normal, Functions normal, although it's never fully the normal foot. It seems okay. to be so. Seems to be, you know, they're, they can be active and live a yeah, normal they, life. Yeah, they've got a great opportunity for, for normal functional feet. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we just got a live question, so this is exciting. Let mm -hmm. me see what it says. Okay, once the brace is worn for three months, mm -hmm. are there special shoes that the baby should wear? So, once the baby has completed the full time use. Yes and then goes to just nighttime use, that leaves them the full day to be in whatever they want. And so I'll tell mom that she can have whatever she wants on the foot at that time. So the baby could go barefoot, the baby could have whatever shoes they like. So during the time they're out of the brace, after three months, anything's fair game. Okay, so you don't recommend maybe... Stride some, rides or Yeah, no. maybe some flip-flops or <laughs> nothing in particular. No, okay. everything, let, them, let mom and dad choose. Okay, mm -hmm. very good to know. All right, so I think as we're starting to kind of wrap up our club foot session, maybe let's get into some of the research okay. that we do here at Scottish Rite yeah. for this. Well, since we embarked on the non-operative method, uh, working with Ponsetti 20 years ago, we've enrolled patients who come here into a study. So we have a database of 1,200 patients oh, wow. who are normal kids with club feet. And then we have a couple of hundred patients who are not normal kids who have club feet. Okay. So we've been able to follow the status of these children and realize what percentage are successfully treated with this, what percentage relapse and require more treatment, what percentage need some surgery. We've looked at the kids to see how their function is in our movement science lab. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Dr. Carroll, one of my partners, has done that and published on that quite a bit. So we've learned a lot about club feet. We still don't know the cause of it. We do have the opportunity to look at some of the genetics of it, and we're doing some research with that, with um, Dr. Jonathan Rios, okay. who is with us in our research department. So there's a lot of exciting research that's going on with club feet. We want to understand it, we want to conquer it, we'd love to prevent it, Right. but I don't think that <laughs> preventing it's going to happen in my career. <laughs> But it looks like we have a really good plan. It's, it's so great. It's a parents great shouldn't worry. Program. Parents shouldn't worry. We can get some really great, great results with this. I'd be optimistic. And that's what I tell every mom and dad who comes in. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, this is a pleasure. great session to learn about club foot. And we're excited. SRH Access. Uh, tune in next week. We'll be back. Thank you again.